Hi, this is Ant Miner Repair. And tonight we're gonna to continue our series in putting the chip on the board. Um, I've put the chip on the board, gotten bad resistance, refloated, got bad resistance. And um, actually I refloated again and got better resistance. So I'm gonna show you the resistance. And um, basically I kind of had the chip off again and I put more flux on it before I put it on and I got another take at it. So, so this chip has been re-put back on and then um, I'm, uh, let me show you the results on how it should look. I kind of got my camera close up enough so that you can kind of see these, these test ports. I'm gonna show you how to measure the resistance of these guys. I'm trying to do it by the video. It's, it's measuring here and measuring here on this chip. This is the chip we replaced. So I wanna go through that. Um, it's still not perfect. I tested it outside my garage with the tester and voltages. It's really close. In fact, we've gotten so close that the rest of the chips now have voltage. So it actually a lot of stuff carries through, but I'm losing voltage between here and here, and I'm losing voltage between here and here, or, or not actually, I think it's producing it out, but I have a problem still coming into the chip. Um, but we're gonna look at both solder joints this time. I'm gonna use the soldering iron to touch up these joints close up under the microscope. And I don't know if you can tell, I know you can't tell, but during my rework, I lost a resistor here and I lost a resistor here. I'll eventually show you guys how to put those on, but you also can find how to solder SMD resistors. Um, I'm using 0602s, so that's the size. Um, there's another size, I think 0204 or 060 or 0201 or something like that. It's a size smaller. And I think those are the original sizes, but I bumped up the size of the resistor because I got a good deal on eBay. And I don't think it makes any difference. Please tell me otherwise if, if you do think so. All right, so if you want to, if you like this content, please subscribe to my channel, or if you just want to be notified when I do a new bell, um, just hit that bell icon and you'll know when I put a new video out. You can decide whether you want to watch it. I guess either way you can decide whether you want to watch it. Um, thank you guys for all my new subscribers. Um, hello to my friends in Russia and Salman. Um, thank you for your conversation the other day. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's get started. And unfortunately, I'll have to take this back out and test it later after we work it. But um, I wanna show you how to test the resistance. Usually I was doing it, but you couldn't quite see where I was poking. So generally um, it's safe to test the resistance right after you do the chip, even when it's hot. Um, I put my positive probe on the chip and sometimes you have to kind of dig it. And then you have these, these five test ports. The middle test port is the one I always test first. It should be around 2.5 kilo ohms like that. Now, before on this chip, I was getting like about five. And I know that's backwards, but that's 2.549, 2 2.520, 2. yeah, 2.549 right now. Hopefully it's not on your video backwards, but it looks like it might be. Um, I don't think I can turn that around. All right. So I got really good resistance coming in here. This middle port is the RO port, which is actually starting on chip 30 and working back to chip one. There's one other resistance I test, and it's right here. Um, no, not the middle one. One right next to the middle one, and I get messed up. It should be right around 10 kilo ohms, right close. That's 10.03. So this is good. Now I check the other ones. Um, not a real great test, but it should be zero. It should not have any conductivity. So I push here, there's zero. I push here, zero and I push here the zero. If you try to test these when the chip is hot, you're gonna get resistance. You really have to let it cool off before you test here. If you get a bad chip, you'll get resistance on here. Um, if I, when I say bad chip, when you lay it down and it doesn't take, it probably has a short or not connected, you'll get bad resistance here. Another place you can test is these resistors right here. These resistors are on one of the voltage regulators on the back of the board and um, Typically, if you poke at these on the positive, this is the negative side of it. So this is a negative plate right here. But if you kind of can touch that, let me see if I can do it. I'm having a hard time with the equipment there. That's about 70 ohms. So, so both these will be about 70 because they're on the reverse side of the capacitor. But on the positive side, I think one usually reads about 1.5 ohms. Let's see if I can get it to do it. And maybe that's my problem. Yeah, so he's about 1.5 ohms backwards that you guys are seeing if I can tell right. And then the other one should have a pretty high res 
resistance in ohms, probably like 50 to 70. Well, I have 138, that's probably still good. I checked these other guys up and down the board and they're, they're, they're consistent with each other. So this is actually testing these first few pins on the chip coming in. Um, if you have a resistance of like seven ohms or six ohms, you probably have a problem with the chip because I've, I've had that case and gone and reworked the whole power supply, it didn't change it. The whole regulator down there, the circuit that supplies this power, um, turned out it was a chip. All right, so now also checking the plugs over here. I'll try the middle. I mean, this, this chip reads really well. It's 2.5. I think my 10 is right here. And then all these other guys should be zero. There's a zero. There's a zero. And there's a zero where I'm testing there. So this chip pass, passes my first test on did it go in right. The second test was obviously running video. And it turns out that I think this guy right here, which is CI, it's called CI if you look on the back, is coming in at 1.7 volts and arriving at the chip at 1.3. And, and frankly, um, I don't think that's good enough, um, actually. And it's, it's still saying zero ASIC. Might be another problem. Solomon told me to check the, the power supply, but I am getting power here. And that is that power supply that feeds those guys. Um, but I will recheck that again, Solomon, for sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch cameras on you. Um, this looks good, um, but now I really need to refloat the chip yet again. And um, hopefully I don't overheat the chip and destroy the chip. Um, I've done that before. Um, it's just a never ending saga until you get it to take. And then if you get fed up, you just take the chip off and either start with another chip or clean up this chip and try again. And it's over and over and over until you get it to take. Um, I wish I had a surefire method for you. This is a method I use and I can't wait to discover a repeatable pattern. Um, I'm really working towards that. Um, again, I think in the earlier video, I said, I'll go minimal on, on the solder. I'm gonna try to put a link to a video that a guy replaces um, a, QFN, a, a QFN chip. This is not quite a QFN because I think it's quad is QFN. Um, a QFN chip um, replaces it. So he pulls off the old one, cleans it. It was the guy that I mentioned before, if you heard on the video, that said, oh yeah, yeah, as you clean off all the solder. And I think that's right, because some of it's leaded and some of it's not leaded. But, but um, he actually puts solder on the legs and solder on the pad, just not a lot. Now I've got it on the chip. As you see, I prepared the chip because that's the tool they gave me and I'm doing it. So it's a game not to put too much on the pad so it raises the chip so the legs don't touch. But I do think there ought, probably ought to be a little bit on the pad. Um, still a little bit of um, a, a little bit of flux. I actually did see this chip while I was heating it at the end, kind of adjust itself like you're supposed to. That the the resistance of the solder, the surface tension on the solder, straightened the chip out and lined it up. Um, I still just haven't ha had the happy place where I can do that every time. All right, so on with this video. Um, I'm going to switch off this camera for a sec and get my microscope adjusted. So bear with me. Got to move some things around here. Microscopes over to the left and all sorts of weird stuff. Uh, where is that chip? Okay, so we're going to come down. I'm going to get rid of my, let me see, I'll switch. At least you can see something that I'm moving around. Yeah, that's not quite what I want, but I'm moving my, my, um, Ohm meter. So here is the guy. And if you can imagine, I mean, this was a nice shiny piece of copper when we started. Look at, look at all the places I've tried to test. Well, I, I have to admit, sometimes the, the ohm meter doesn't dig in. So I just kind of dig it in here and make another scratch. So you can tell I've kind of been all over this chip. But for right now, let's focus on, on these legs right here. And I'm going to try to go in further if I can. And don't know how this is going to go, really honestly, but we're going to, I see some kind of, you can see where I drag the pin across these chips. And some of them are really uneven. Um, you look for dull solder, kind of like maybe some of, that looks kind of dull. That's a little shinier. I don't like that solder joint, but guess what? It's not going anywhere and I don't think it's going down on the board. These probably were for your temperature sensors and stuff, but this board, this um, chip doesn't have a temp sensor hooked up to it. This guy's suspect, and this is actually near the line. This is the line I'm having problems with, and I think this is the line I'm having problems with. There's some leftover flux in there. I've, I've already cleaned it. 
Um, but I just want to go through starting with the bottom and kind of solidify those guys up. So I'm going to turn on my soldering iron. I, I put a brand new tip on it. I'm going to set it for 350. Um, so, just so I don't instantly burn the chip up and get it too hot. Um, of course, um, we're going to th throw, gee, got some stuff stuck to my flux here. Um, let's just go all up and down with the flux. I'm just going to try to hit every pin. It's been my experience when I hit every pin, the solder goes underneath the chip and I need to add more solder. Um, I hope that's not what's going to happen. I hope I just firm it up. Um, so, we'll see here. The problem is now I can't even see where I'm going with the flux like it is. So I don't quite like that. I guess that's a pin right there. Yeah, I'm getting down there. So I'm just going to touch it. Maybe I got to go at a different angle here. I'm just going to touch it. They kind of lost it. Now I don't know if my tip soaked it up. But I don't think so. So I could really be screwing up my connection with the chip and have to do it again. But this is what they do. I'm going to touch that dude. Get him warm, get him, get him a nice connection. I think that did it. We'll inspect him later. This guy right here. My hand kind of shakes. This guy. This guy. This guy. This guy. I hope this is doing something. Don't know. Could be pulling the solder off the top of the chip for all I know, but um, I see people doing this. So at least they're nice and shiny now, right? Uh, two more. No, 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 don't do that. I must be missing some. Um... Gee, did I cause a bridge there now? <laughs> Let's take a look. Clean it off. What do I got there? Can't quite tell with all the liquid. Let me get a drying agent here, which means the dry end of a Q-tip. <laughs> I can always put more flux on it. But yeah, that doesn't look so great. So let me let me try to do those again. Those look a little rough. Not sure they were even bad to begin with, but um, I just being consistent doing everybody. So try to hit these guys again. I'll start probably right down there. Really have a hard time seeing into the microscope. Um, these guys. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. It's five. And it's a bridge. I'm just going to get rid of that bridge now. All right. So it looks like I did. Let me see what I did to it, though. I'm going to take some alcohol and clean this guy off and check it out. Let me see. See, the solder kind of disappeared on those guys, right? Can you tell? Let me try to get it under the microscope here. Solder just kind of flat disappeared. I can actually see it from an angle here. So it looks like it did its job. You yeah, could probably turn on some air. Dry that solder up. So they're there. You just can't see them in there. So they're shiny. Let me turn my hot air off again. OK. So now. They're all nice, shiny connections, but I really don't know if we did anything. Um, that guy looks a little dull again down there, but I still think it's shinier than dull. So I'm going to leave him. So I'm going to flip the board around. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, I tried adding solder, but I, I just don't have the tips to add tiny amount of solder. This looks really terrible because I've got alcohol and flux on it. So I'm going to do a clean with alcohol and I'm going to put flux on it. We're going to run through the legs of these. And these these have minimal solder on them, so let me dry. He's had some leftover flux on them before, and I cleaned them off. Let's see here. A sec. You see where I ran a pin down through there? I actually think they do have solder, but I just kind of got in the way. Oops, wrong one. Okay, time for some flux. Flux is our friend. Make sure I'm up there all the way down this chip. You don't want to run out because then it starts doing some weird things like causing bridges like that last one. Okay, here we go. I'll start at the bottom and work up, I guess. 
I'm hopefully I can see these dudes. Let me see if I can clear out some of them. You gotta be at the right angle for this to work. This one has its legs surface being gone, so I just want to get to the chip. Jeez, can that be focused any better? Or, ah, look at that. Maybe that's better. Those look a little better now. Boys under flux. Okay, I'm clean my tip real nice. So I put a brand new tip on for this. So it stays nice. I'm gonna shut off the soldering iron. I'm gonna clean with alcohol. I'm gonna clean that up. I don't know that you're gonna have a noticeable difference of, of what this is, but uh, let's have a look. The quick way to make alcohol go away. Give it a little heat and some air. Still looks kind of like a mess to me, if you ask me. Just look at it at a different angle from a different light. Let me see if I can get it to you. Oh, there's my mess. It's got to be around here somewhere. So I went through and I touched those. I'm not sure it did any good. It might have even made it worse. But, you know, the chip should be down. That one looks all right. Yeah, these are, these are buttons. So... Let's see if I ruined it by just checking our voltages. And, and you're just going to have to kind of bear with me. I probably won't switch to the other, other angle. But let me get my voltmeter. If we went backwards, I'm probably going to be inclined to pull the chip back off and do it yet again. So let's have a look. If it stayed the same, I might go take it to the tester to see if we improve. So, so here's the outside line. Here is the middle, 2.5 and the 10 one, 9.98, so it changed, but it's still within spec. And I'm getting zeros so far for my other guy. Okay, so that side's good. Now the chip continuing on this way, let's have a look. There's the outside pin, nothing, which is good. The 10 is good. 2.5 is still good. Zero, zero. So, my resistance has changed a little bit, but not much. So um, we didn't break anything that we can see, but now I need to go actually measure the voltage from, from this chip on. So um, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna come back. I might try to refloat this one more time by putting flux on either side and heating the chip up until I see them. So they're molten solder, you know, liquid solder and, and maybe tap the chip or try to move it around a little bit and then try to get it set again. That would be the next thing. After that, if I can't get it to work, I'll pull the chip off again. Um, so you may see another video out of this. Probably will, and my luck. So thank you for watching. Um, hope hope that helps. I wish I had a steadier hand. Probably, probably you guys have a steadier hand doing solder, but that's what I do. Thank you very much.